Item G5, presentation by Glenn Falk of his concept for locating the new Forsyth County Library at the old Sheriff's Department in Marshall Plaza. All right, thank you, Mr. Falk. And, and let me note this is not only uh, agenda as an action item, but is on the agenda for presentation, questions, and discussion. Mr. Falk, thank you for, for coming out tonight. Thank you. Um, let me just close this. Um, I want to thank the um, committee for giving me this opportunity. Um, my supporters and I, in a way, this, uh, this thing will not close. All right, well, hopefully you can see in, in spite of that. Um, so as you know, I'm, I'm here to make a presentation about um, combining the New Forsyth County Central Library with the development of Marshall Plaza. And um, I premise the, um, this whole kind of presentation on the idea that um, Winston-Salem is, is not just any other city. And, and there's something special about Winston-Salem. And so um, I would argue a city like Winston-Salem deserves more than just another library. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here. All right, so um, I don't know, is Ed McNeil still here? Or <laughs> this, um, you could click on that X and it might I close it I keep clicking on it and it won't. Uh, several times. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Right. Okay. Persistence. Um, so um, as you know, this is, this is the current situation. Um, on the left, you have the original Carnegie Library and then the 1953 and 1980 structures. Um, and I would actually. Um, throw out the idea that, um, sorry, I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties here. I apologize. I'm used to a Mac, so. <laughs> um, so what I would throw out is that we should, since we're, we're more than just another city, we should aspire for a library that, um, that really celebrates who we are as, as a community. And um, so I would, I would say that we should look back to the 20th century prototypes, those being the Boston Public Library on the left and the New York Public Library on the right. The thing that ties these two facilities together is they both sit on prominent, important urban squares, Copley Square in Boston and Bryant Park in um, New York City. And both of them have these grand reading rooms, which you can see in the images overlooking those um, grand public spaces. Um, as far as contemporary libraries go in the 21st century, um, I, would, I would look to Des Moines as a great case study for Winston-Salem. Des Moines is a similarly sized city, and they built a library that responds to contemporary technological needs, and they also um, included features such as um, the green roof and the energy efficient skin, which actually saves um, Des Moines 25% on operational costs, as well as they took the cues from the New York and Boston public libraries by having the library anchor um, an important public square in downtown Des Moines. Um, if Boston and New York were the prototypes of the 20th century library, then Seattle has definitely emerged as the prototype of the 21st century library. And I would argue that they, um, they took the cues of actually putting, the, you know, putting it on a park, but since it's Seattle and it rains all the time, they actually put the park on the indoors and made this great idea. urban room. So that, that brings us back to Winston-Salem. And I um, wanted to show this slide because um, you can see to, the, uh, to this point right here, if you can see the cursor, that's where the existing central library is. And then the site that I'm proposing is right here, which is the Marshall Plaza Sheriff's Department site. As you can see, that it's really in the densest, most active part of downtown. Um, another important thing to note is, if you look at the, um, the yellow box at the center of the, of the slide and the red um, grouping around it, that is the Sheriff's Department property and the Marshall Plaza property. The important um, thing to note about this is that it's equidistant. That site is equidistant from East Winston to West End, from Old Salem to the Martin Luther King North Liberty Corridor. Um, and I think you know, that's, that underscores the importance of this being a library for the full community. Um, also, the transit center is one block to the north. If you look on the slide, if you can see where the cursor is, which I guess you probably can't, um, that outer ring, which is a 10 to 12 minute walk from the, cent from the Sheriff's Department Marshall Plaza site, is actually where the existing central library is. This is a, um, a zoom in of that site. And um, 
one of the key things to think about with, in terms of this slide, this slide is um, to the left of, this, of the Marshall Plaza site, you've got Restaurant Row, which is very successful. Above it, you have the Trade Street Arts District. To the right, you have the Innovation <coughs> Corridor. Um, and then to the south, you have um, Wells Fargo, BB&T, and, and the government offices. So you have all these successful nodes within downtown Winston-Salem, but they all converge on that same center at Trade Street and Fourth, and that's, that's the underperforming kind of heart of the city. That's where you have more empty storefronts, and um, so I'm, I'm positing that if we actually develop that as this community square, this community center for the um, new Marshall Plaza as well as the library, that it would actually tie all the success stories of downtown together and make it one cohesive whole. Um, so this is what it looks like today with the Sheriff's Department off to the right. Um, since, this is, since this idea is an idea about um, combining park program, a town square with um, the public library, I'm showing this slide which um, talks about an example from Minneapolis called Open Field, which is a um, publicly curated, crowdsourced park. Basically, anybody in town can decide, I want to have an event. There could be a chess tournament, there could be a lawn bowling competition, or um, if, when you see in the upper right, there's um, a guy that proposed an internet cat video festival, which um, thousands and thousands of people showed up for it, and it's become an annual event that Minneapolis has become known for. The bottom of the slide is um, a similar approach, but it's for children. It's called Imagination Playground. This is actually a project that I built in New York, and it, it basically gives the barest of, of infrastructure to kids water, sand, and then these big blue foam blocks that we designed, and literally turns them loose and allows them to explore their creativity and their imagination. And it also builds teamwork and, and socialization skills um, among the kids. And I think this is a key element that could exist downtown, because downtown has a burgeoning population, but downtown, as of yet, still does not have a playground. Um, I, I've spoken to multiple partner organizations, a few of them are listed, and they all love the idea of being able to, um, to, to help curate this downtown urban square um, and, and put on events and, and reserve it for a month at a time to, to, um, to kind of have it as their downtown presence. Um, this is a quick timeline of um, the library and the history of the city. And um, <coughs> the key thing I'd like to note with this um, is when the 1953 building opened, the height of technology was black and white photocopies, black and white TV, and LP records. That building, 60 years later, is being asked to perform unimaginable things, things that could never have been dreamed up in, in the early 50s. And so um, this slide is just meant to kind of underscore the fact that we need to do something that's not obsolete right out of the gate. Um, and another key, key issue that comes up time and again is the question of why do we even need a public library in the 21st century? And uh, this was a question asked of me of a um, prominent business executive here in town, and he answered it himself, or at least he thought he did, by saying, hasn't Google eliminated that need? And um, <coughs> Google actually approached the architecture firm that I work for in New York and said, we actually need a community commons. We need a physical space. Um, so if Google feels like they need a library, then I think what's the sound probably could <laughs> use one too. Um, so this is um, Marshall Plaza, and, and the key thing about this, in terms of, it, in addition to its centrality, is the fact that it's accessible from every direction. Trade Street actually dead ends into it. And this slide kind of shows all the success stories around that site, um, and and all of this is you know leads up to this idea of why not build on the ideas put forth by New York Public Library and the Boston Public Library and accentuated by Seattle by saying that the library could be the park and the park could be the library. Let's blur the distinction between those two and make them the true community commons and community, community center that, that they really function as in the 21st century. So this is a view of um, what the site looks like today. And this is what I'm proposing. Um, the Sheriff's Department building, you can see to the right, it's the original footprint uh, with just one floor added to the top um, with a reading room to kind of work with that Boston and New York um, model. It also features a green roof and an energy efficient skin, which would reduce the operational cost. And then um, a big chunk of the um, program for the library is actually this zone that's kind of built into um, Marshall Plaza. Um, this is what I would call the living room of the library, and it's the more public functions, the circulation desk, the cafe, um, you know, some, some of the louder functions of the library. And then if you see 4th Street to the left, 
the whole park and library would actually be accessible at grade directly off the sidewalk of 4th Street. So it would just, it would open up off of 4th Street and, and the termination of trade is this grand public park facility as well as library. And, um, this, this slide kind of shows a look and a feel of, of the different components. Um, there could be a revenue generating um, auditorium space which would be directly beneath the um, amphitheater that is up against the Pepper Building and there's a image of what that could look like in the upper left. Um, below that, um, along 4th Street, you could have an area with birch trees, um, fountains and loose tables and chairs, sort of like in Bryant Park for people to come and have a quick bite to eat or maybe you set up a chess table, a chess board. Um, at, the, uh, at the south or the bottom of the slide, um, there could be people watching risers, which you can see the, the wood risers in the lower left. Um, the playground idea has a home there. The um, amphitheater could have, um, you know, an event stage. It could be programmed for all kinds of things, from swing dancing to, um, to you could do National Black Theater Festival. When they come to town, they could do teaser scenes for the upcoming performance and actually sell tickets right there for for the night's performance. And then at the very center is what I'm calling Winston Crossing, which is um, this is actually taken from the literally taken from the design of Salem Square, where the paths cross at the center be a, a beautiful um, glass skylight to pour light into the library um, and fronting that would be the front porch of Winston-Salem which would be complete with um, rocking chairs and a cafe. And then at the bottom center of the slide you can see kind of a view of what the um, very light and airy open um, living room portion of the, the library would feel like. Um, so this is a view of the front of the library and the park. Um, if, if you're, this is literally if you're standing in front of the CVS on the corner of Trade and um, 4th Street, this would be your view. Um, and you know, a lot of people stop me and they're like, oh, so you're proposing putting the library underground. And I'm showing this slide to, to put that to rest that you're seeing, you're very much looking at the library as well as the park. The, the library is not underground. The park is not necessarily on top of it. They all just kind of blur and become one and the same. And this is a view from the corner of um, Town Run Lane and 3rd Street. So 3rd Street would stay exactly as it is today. You'd have parking for 100 cars um, on, basically on the site because you could just pull out the dirt that's there right now um, to make um, the Civic Plaza land and have space for, for 100 cars. I've talked to two different contractors in town. They both said that this would cost 50 cents on the dollar um, to build this versus doing um, a ground up brand new parking deck and um, you know and, and you can see at the center is the um, the living room it's very open and light and very visible if, if you were to come out of First Presbyterian Church this would be your view you would see this very dynamic active thing and then you can see the trees and, and the greenery up top that would be um, a great place to have a picnic um, so one of the key issues with this is the economic impact um, Greenville, South Carolina, which um, Falls Park on Reedy River is the upper right slide, or upper right um, image. Greenville in 2000 spent um, $13 million to build this park, which is actually a bigger park, so it's a bigger price tag. In the first eight years that that park existed, the city saw $100 million of private investment. That included a uh, satellite campus of a local college, um, a new hotel, residential, retail, office buildings. I mean, the full mixed use. It's one of the most active parts of downtown Greenville. Detroit, um, which are the two images in the middle, Detroit is obviously the poster child of everything that's gone wrong with cities and, and city financing. Um, they actually built a very similarly sized park to what I'm talking about in the center of their downtown, and they've seen $450 million of private investment even with the problems that Detroit has. And that includes, um, you can see in the image to the center left, a brand new building from Ernst & Young, as well as a 4,000 employee um, new headquarters for CompuWare right on, the, on that square. And the CEO of CompuWare said, the reason I brought my company to downtown Detroit was because of this square. Um, new York City has built the High Line. It's only two thirds complete. They've already seen $4 billion of private investment. And I know. New York is many times larger than Winston-Salem, but if you drop a couple zeros off $4 billion, that's still a lot of money for a city like Winston-Salem. Um, similarly, libraries have um, economic impacts as well. The Pittsburgh um, Carnegie Library, which is their flagship 
public library attracts half a million more people per year than the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Carnegie Science Center combined. And that converts into $91 million in combined economic output. Um, Seattle's new library, which you know, I said was the prototype of the 21st century library, in its first full year of operation, they had 2.3 million visitors. That's compared to 660,000 visitors the year before. And those new visitors translated into $15.6 million of new spending in Seattle that did not exist before. Um, Des Moines, they're so proud of their new public library that it actually shows up on their um, tourist websites. The city's visitors and convention bureau actually put the image of the library on their, their home page to try and attract people to come to see their library as a tourist attraction. Rockville, Maryland um, built a whole $350 million redevelopment of their downtown around their new library. Um, so th this is just a, a teaser of, of what the, the type of development that could actually follow this investment in downtown Winston-Salem. I think it would um, definitely make the Pepper Building and the Courthouse projects as popular and as successful as the Nissen Building. I think it would also jumpstart um, development talks about the Reynolds Building because it's just a block away and it, it's a, a, a really strong step forward for the city, um, as well as um, potentially the uh, parking lot on the corner of um, 3rd and Liberty could get developed. So the list is, is endless, really. I mean, if you start to think about how many um, economic development opportunities there are in that, that area. So this is a really quick breakdown. I, I spoke to two of the oldest um, and largest Winston-Salem-based contractors. And this is a quick breakdown of some numbers they gave me, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. So the bond was for $28 million. That's county money. It's already in the bank. Um, the existing sheriff's department building has 40,000 square feet of space. To do the renovation that I'm talking about, they gave me a number of $200 per square foot. So that comes out to $8 million off the $28 million. So we're down to, to um, $20 million. To add the one floor, to the, to the top, which is a little bit larger because it's cantilevered so that you can see it coming down Trade Street to kind of be an inviting, compelling, dynamic piece of architecture. That, um, that would be at $280 a square foot at um, 14,000 square feet. Comes out to roughly another $4 million. So we've spent $12 million of the $28 million from the county. Then um, there are three levels that are shared by both the park and the library. That would be the parking that's direct, directly accessible off 3rd Street, the, the floor of the, the living room section of the library, and then the floor of Marshall Plaza above that. So, and those are seen in these three slides. So since that's a shared component, um, that's where potential city funding as well as, as the remaining $16 million of county funding could go. Um, so based on the numbers that those contractors had given me, at, um, which was $280 a square foot, when you have $16 million, if you want to build um, a 68,000 square foot facility, which would basically be that, that red footprint that you see there, which would give you the parking level, the living room floor for the library, so 68,000 square feet of space for the library, plus 68,000 square feet of space for Marshall Plaza, which is roughly one and a half acres, somewhere in, the, in that neighborhood, um, that would basically cost $19 million. Which, um, so if you're, if you're doing the math, you've got your $28 million, subtract the $8 million for the renovation of the Sheriff's Department, $4 million for adding one floor, so you're down to $16 million of that. So basically that leaves a shortfall of $3 million to, to begin to really realize the infrastructure of this idea. Um, my, my colleagues and I, my supporters and I, have, have met with multiple um, business leaders, foundations, CEOs in the private sector, as well as um, individual philanthropists who love this idea and, and are ready to, to start to fund it. And I think, I know that um, the, county is a, is a, the county runs the library, the city would run the park. You know, they would own those, those individual components. And the, the county doesn't want to spend money on the city's park, and the city doesn't want to spend money on the county's library. So that's where um, the, the private sector would come in to actually form the bridge within that partnership, to actually begin to fill in any, any shortfalls in funding. So that money could actually be earmarked to, to go towards plantings, you know, and, and fountains and park benches, as well as to 
computers and, and furniture for the, um, for the library. And um, you also have the potential of, I know there's the upcoming vote on the business improvement um, district, which um, that could actually be tapped as a way to maintain and operate this um, in terms of you know, increased um, security or um, garbage collection, stuff like that. And then you also have the potential of a shared revenue generation shared between the city and the county with features such as the public auditorium, which would um, be something that could be rented out, as well as the green roof deck, which you could either be designated as a restaurant where the proceeds are shared by the city and the county, or it could be an event space that gets rented out or some kind of a combination of both. So I think there, there are inventive ways to bolster and supplement um, money. Uh, one of the things that I actually mentioned to Councilman Taylor was the idea that um, the county would still own the parking lot directly behind the Sheriff's Department building. That land will now be worth a lot more than it currently is. And so perhaps the city and the county take joint ownership of that. And so when they sell that land to a private developer who's going to want to build a mixed use project because now it's on Marshall Plaza, one of the best addresses in town, the city and the county could, could actually share this, the proceeds of that sale. You also have the potential um, of selling the um, parking lot at the corner of um, 3rd and Liberty, and, and maybe that gets attached to the TIF that's, our, that's in place for um, the Pepper Building and um, the Courthouse. So I'm showing this slide because um, I've, you might have seen some stuff about me in, in the paper and, and, and my friends and supporters. We've reached out to everybody who will give us 10 minutes and, and, and talk to a lot of people, and, I, and I'm just listing a few of them. Um, but it's really, you know, it's, it's been about 80 one-on-one -on -one conversations, plus about 525 people on Facebook that are very active and have been following this. Um, we really haven't had a negative comment on this. Everybody sees this as, as a great idea. And these are, these are actually some of the comments that have been made. And um, <clears throat> you know, one comment from actually one of downtown's biggest employers and a local CEO, he, he looked at this and he was like, you know, this is a no-brainer. I could use this to recruit young people to move here to work for my tech company. I mean, this, this becomes part of my, my pitch and my sell. His daughter, who's um, 13, was like, this is totally cool. My friends and I would be down here all the time. Um, another a Wake Forest student who actually, um, a group of Wake Forest students saw me make this presentation and they've asked to help push this forward. And um, one of them sent me an email today and he said, you know, if this project is selected, there's a very high chance I will end up moving here to Winston-Salem after graduation and try and start my business here. He wants to set up a business of food trucks. And, and he was like, this would be the perfect place to set up shop. Um, a local um, arts leader who left, when, who was here in Winston and then left and then came back, you know, he said, you know, we used to do great things here. Um, now we seem to aspire to mediocrity. Let's do this just so Winston-Salem can be Winston-Salem again. Um, and speaking of those Wake Forest students, they actually put together a survey because um, they were really interested in the city's ability to retain them and other students from the local universities as well as um, recruit young people to come and make their careers here and start their families. And so um, just, these are just a few of the questions that they asked. And this went out on the list serve at Wake Forest, Winston-Salem State, School of the Arts, and Salem College, as well as um, Forsyth Tech. And um, what, what quality of life factors will help you decide where to live after graduating? And does Winston-Salem have these factors and qualities? The answer to does Winston-Salem have these factors and qualities in their mind, 7% said yes. 75, um, 16% said somewhat, 75% said no. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10 as to whether or not you would suggest having, you know, Winston-Salem as a city to live in, it came in as a 4.66, which means less of them thought it was somewhere they would recommend to live. Um, and lastly, would you like to work in Winston-Salem after you graduate? 6% said yes, 94% said no, and, and of those respondents who said yes, Two of them said yes with no qualms. The other five all had either family or um, romantic relationships that would keep them here. Um, and I'm just saying that to, to underscore that this is an opportunity for the city to do something game-changing and for the city to, to make a statement and, and, and really be Winston-Salem again. And, um, you know, I've, obviously I'm, I'm a little, probably a little bit too close to this, but I honestly think that this, 
this would be a catalyst for Winston-Salem to say to the rest of the state, to the rest of the country, that this is a city to be reckoned with, not a city to be dismissed. Thank you very much for your time. Right. Thank you, Mr. Phil. I almost started clapping, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Questions uh, for Mr. Paul? I'd like to make a comment. Please. One of the things I notice, people that may not be from here, they have a tendency to attach labels to our city. And yet you want to do something big. If we're called mediocre or, me what is it, mediocrity, you will turn off a lot of people in this city because we're very proud of Winston-Salem. Again, I always stress to people, just because we don't move at the pace of Atlanta and Charlotte and Raleigh and Greensboro, that has not prohibited us from doing great things. And we will continue to do the great things. But I just caution you, and even with the survey numbers, I would caution you if you have not done a diverse group of people from different sectors of the city and you landed on downtown people, it, it, you need to be inclusive. You just need to be inclusive, and please, don't call my city mediocrity. I can't deal with it. That, that was me quoting somebody else. I, I understand I'm that. From, I'm from Winston-Salem. I understand I, that. I love this city, and, um, and I don't think it's mediocre at all. I mean, That's like that Reynolds guy that called us, what was it? Uh, Bucolic. Bucolic. F. F. Ross Johnson. And we never <laughs> forgot that. You know? no. So just make could. sure you use the right le le language at a level that people aren't disengaged from the process. Thank you. Mr. Falk, thank you for uh, a very interesting presentation. We appreciate that. Thank you for the time. Um, is there other business to come for the uh, committee this evening? If not, thank you all for uh, your time and uh, staff for staying late. Uh, and we are adjourned.